Hi, my name is Melanie Murray Hunt. I am a screenwriter. I'm also a director and an actor, a producer. Hi, my name is Stephen Hunt and I'm a screenwriter. He's also a playwright, so he was in Best American Plays and Applause Books. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. Well, I, I've always been a storyteller. And when I was little, I would I was a neighborhood storyteller and I always told stories. I was in love with all the movies as well. Everything that was on television, I was there. But yes, I mean, I started off as an actor and I was like, wow, there's not enough for me to do. I want to play a woman in a corset and I want to do like, you know, 19th century, you know, Jane Austen movies. But where are the stories that would accommodate me in the way I look? And so I don't know. I'm just a born, like I was born to tell stories. Um, just has always been in me. Um. And you know what? What I, what I just thought of was the first time I went to the drive-in movies with my family. We saw The Love Bug and Swiss Family Robinson, and it was sort of you know, it was amazing to go to the movies and see Swiss Family Robinson and Herbie the Love Bug. And I guess I just fell in love with uh, movies and storytelling, and thought you know that would be the coolest thing in the world would be to to actually be part of creating them. I feel like I have some things that, I was looking at the poster of the hoodwink that I did, and that's a, well, we did it together as a script. And then I turned it into a solo show, and it's about when I was a TV actress on a Nickelodeon show called 100 Deeds for Eddie McDowd. There's this movie called Tootsie. And so we're like, let's turn that into like a reverse black lady Tootsie. We called it the hoodwink. And it was about like the double play on like the hood, you know, and like the hoodwink. And so, yeah, I was really proud of that because it was such a, we worked on it together and drew some things from, from our lives. And then um, when I turned it to a solo show, I got to act all the parts. That was extremely exciting and electric to be on stage with the audience like that. And then the other thing is a project that we worked on together as a pilot for Time Warner called um, the white guy. It like signified a change, like a sea change in how we think about talking about race in front of people. That was that was a play I started working on in New York and it uh, was kind of the first time ex exploring the racial experience of being white and a guy and straight. And it was a comedy and we ended up getting it to the public theater in New York and taking it to LA and and it ended up becoming a pilot with Time Warner and uh, we got to go to Quincy Jones house twice and meet Quincy Jones because he was also developing it with us. When I lived in New York and I wanted to be a playwright and I started to think of what you write about and the whole process of consciously trying to come up with a story or something that you think is going to be a hit. You want to write a hit, right? And then every time I tried to do that, I wrote something that was kind of, I didn't really do it right. Like it wasn't ever a hit and no one really liked what I was doing. And then I started to write The White Guy, which was more just stories about my life that were little monologues that were like six or seven minutes a piece and stringing them together and kind of making it up as I went along and being personal and trying to be honest. It was the thing that worked and it was the thing that became a hit. And I never thought when I was writing those stories, those were just kind of like letting off steam storytelling things for myself that I, anyone would be very interested or, or that it would lead to something. And so it was instructive in the way that what people respond to isn't always that side of your brain where you're trying to uh, delve into the architecture of what's a hit. So. Nothing, it just flows out of me in a burst of joy all the time. <laughs> just like a fountain of fun. Well, that, well, I mean, there's always a tension in storytelling between the craft, which is turning the story to the next beat and trying to find the emotional honesty in each scene and trying to stick to it and and sometimes you get an emotional truth that's inconvenient to your storytelling too. So you're always juggling those two masters. And like, you know, Cull said to me one day about some pilot I was working on, make it a hard 30. Like I had written some pilot script and it was about 55 pages long. And I was like, a hard 30, like, but that's, you know, that's the selling point of view and that's the craft of 
script writing and then you got to try and squeeze your little you know gems into that yeah and i think also sometimes when you're forced to do that is when it's better when you have to sometimes when i have to do a rewrite overnight or something like that like it's better and sometimes if i lose a script and i have to rewrite it and i can only remember the really salient parts of it is when it's actually gold um and it's actually just flows so that pressure um sometimes creates the the best writing for me anyway you go first <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. you go you go well i did love succession but succession for me it kind of petered out towards the last few episodes a bit and what was not quite there for me was that they kind of bailed on the supporting characters like like Hugo, the comms guy, like the comms department people, like you could do a whole spinoff of the comms department trying to keep together this insanely dysfunctional family. And it'd probably be funnier than those overprivileged children trying to decide who's going to be the CEO. Mm, that's a good idea. And so, you know, and so oh, yeah. the, I, I, that, that's my pitch right there for the prequel to Succession. We're going to look at the staff for once instead of the spoiled brats. Who would I write for? Who would I write for? For a while, I was like, oh, Carrie Washington on Scandal and Scandal. And I did have, a, I do have a spec script for Scandal if anyone wants to take a look at it. I actually like it quite a bit. Um, her character, Olivia Pope. I've often thought of actors who I'd want to write for. I used to want to write for like Brad Pitt and, and um, Carrie Washington. Like I wanted to write our story, but like with really, really, okay looking people no super good looking people <laughs> like the like the hollywood version of us like which i definitely think would be them but but shows i don't know i don't know like any i'll do anything anything <laughs> <laughs> well you know i'd like to be shonda rhimes if that's any help but, um <laughs> when i was younger i i told a friend i was like well i want to become kind of combo with oprah and kind of a com combo of like Meryl Streep and Oprah and like, and she was like, you better get busy. You got a lot of plans. And I, I think Shonda Rhimes has emerged as that kind of thing. I don't know. I'd love to finish my novel and then use that as my IP, which is not, you know, my television goals, but to draw from that, I told someone that I wanted to be a combination of James Baldwin and David Sedaris. So I want to be, <laughs> I want to, I want to have that depth. And I, but life is inherently absurd and it's inherently really funny and, and deeply, deeply moving. And, um, I want to explore kind of the, the, the intersection of those, those things. Well, I was just thinking of going to see the movie, I Like Movies, and I really love that movie. And I love the feeling of watching it and feeling like, um, like when her mom is like, go to go to Carlton to study film, and, and he's like, I won't, don't want to be a Canadian filmmaker. <laughs> and I thought it was so funny, and I, I I felt so connected to the characters and the the direction of the movie. And then it was filmed in Brantford, and it was all like this sad kind of Canadian town. And I thought, you know, and I thought well, it would be great to do that here too. It would be great to find ways to tell these kinds of stories about our weird shopping mall, sprawl city, mm. cold winter city lives and have some laughs. Well, Sopranos has to be in there. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm sort of gangster driven. Because yeah. Godfather is in there too. Superstore, I like Superstore. Uh, I really love that. Yes, I really, really love it. I don't want to mention Big Bang Theory. I was going to say because, that too. Because it's so <laughs> male, like, it's so, but I think the writing on that is just great. Like, I just think that their comedy and the acting is so on point. So I, I love that show.